What's up, Aiden? Good morning, Ben. How was your weekend? <clears throat> it was good, man. How was yours? It was good. It was fine. I mostly just kept turning up the heat. That's it, man. Good morning. Get you guys started. We're missing. All right, guys, let's do it. Let's go. Choice of hip ups. You guys can choose any hip ups you want to do. We're going to do 30 seconds. Bilateral hip ups. Um, shoulder elevated, foot elevated, single leg, marching, any hip up you want to do. For 30 seconds, three, two, one, go. I'll let you know when 15 seconds are up. That is 15, so you can switch sides. Rest. All right, guys, we're going to go half kneeling position. <clears throat> so I got my right leg down, or excuse me, my left knee is down, right leg is up. I'm going to take my left hand, I'm going to reach over, grab a hold of the outside of my right knee. So left hand, right knee. Okay. Um, and I want your chest rotated. And all you're going to do is just do arm circles. You're going to do six backward. And then six forward. You can rotate the chest a little bit. So ideally, fingertips are always looking at your, or yeah, fingertips are looking at your eyes. That's a bad trip. Uh, eyes are looking at your fingertips. Did he got my joke? Come on, that was funny. Let's see. Those of you that did get my trick, my joke have had a bad trip. So six forward and backward air guitar. And then we're going to stay down in that position. And what we're going to do is we're going to slide our heel a little bit closer to our butt. So you're going to bring your heel as close to your butt with still being able to keep your heel on the ground. Hands go down, hips go up. And then as you come down, I want you to push the knee over top of the toes and then back up and then push the knee over top of the toes, keeping the heel down. You're gonna do eight. I want you to push that knee as far over top of the toes as you feel comfortable. Eight each side, please. After you get eight each side, let me get you guys to stand up, please.
So what we're going to do next is um, so we're going to go T position. And what we're going to do is there's going to be three positions that we're going to go through. Here, you're going to go right and back to Ella. So we're going T position. I'm going to rotate thumbs as far backwards as, can, as I can, and then rotate thumbs as far backwards as I can. Okay, and I want you to think about rotating from here, not rotating down here, okay? So we're thinking about rotating from the shoulder blades. You're gonna do six. Okay, so six, just front to back rotations. Then we're gonna bend, we're gonna make a, 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 an E or maybe a trident, however you wanna look at that. And then we're gonna go down and up six times. So six, six. Okay, then the last one is just going up into I, okay? So you're just doing six, taking the arms up over top of the head. for our single leg, excuse me, for our single leg and lateral uh, lunges for today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a single leg hand walkout. Okay, so single leg, I'm gonna reach down, I'm gonna lightly touch, I'm gonna walk my hands as far away. These are also called the Lindas. I'm gonna walk my hand as far away. I'm gonna walk my hand back to my leg. I'm gonna do five lateral squats, okay? And then we're going back to that leg, walking away, walking up, five. We're gonna do 30 seconds each side. All right, three, two, one, go. So single leg, walkie walkie, nice and easy. And then single leg back up, step into that lateral squat. Five of those lateral squats. Give me two times. I think we'll be able to get twice 30 seconds. So that's 30 seconds. Finish out, give me two on that side, and then give me two on the other side meaning one hand walk out, five lateral squats, twice each side. After you guys get that done, we're gonna go into our self-love. So basic self-love positions is we have our toe touch, big hip hinge. Make sure you push through the hips first. Okay, a lot of times when we touch our toes, we look down at the ground and then our spine rounds, okay? I want you to hip hinge first, then let the head and spine drop. We're looking for two to four good toe touches. Two to four good, maybe it takes you 10 toe touches before you can get two to four. That's totally fine. Maybe it takes you two toe touches before you can get two good toe touches. Great, move on to the next one. Spend time in the areas that you are the tightest in.
After our toe touch, we got our deep squat. Just looking at trying to get hips below knees into that deep squat position. If you rock around a little bit, my hips and knees are feeling pretty tight. So for me, I would spend maybe about 30 seconds just rocking around in this position. Coming up, come back down. I want your chest up. Doesn't do us any good if we can squat all the way down to the ground, but we can't lift our head up. Need to be able to look at what's coming at us for hunters. You're all killers. Weight killers. Not like weight, but like weight, like kettlebell weight. After school wants, you got arms overhead. Some of you guys know a couple different ways that we can do a lot of these different movements. Feel free to put some of those ways in. Maybe you want to hang from a bar. Maybe you want to do your arms overhead like this. We're just trying to get the arms over top of our head. Then we have our quadruped spinal waves. Remember when you guys do your quadruped spinal waves, I want most of that motion happening from your upper back between your shoulder blades. That's where we tend to be the stiffest, the tightest. We got our wrist stretches after that. I'm gonna give you guys about another 40 seconds. Uh We got today, we got day one. Blowing that butt out for today. I think. All right, gang. So. You guys in-house, you guys all have bands uh, at your station. Um, if you want a harder band, you would take this little green one. Okay, I know it looks easier, but it's actually harder. Or you would go to a blue, okay? Green works pretty good, but if you wanna make it harder, you can. So we got our three-way band and hip series. You can take the band, put it around your knees, around your ankles. I personally like to do it around the balls of my feet, okay? And we have three um, uh, hip or um, three foot positions that we're gonna go. So we're gonna go angled first. I take a step, bring both feet together. So I'm walking in an angle, okay? Then we have side shuffles or side steps. And then we have one very similar to the first one, but Instead of bringing feet together, I'm gonna to keep my feet apart and I'm gonna make a C. So I'm gonna step, I'm gonna bring it in and then make a C, okay? Um, we're gonna do, do 15 each. So 15 each direction, each side, three, two, one, go. Feet should be pointing straight ahead. Fast, quick steps. We want fast, quick steps because we don't want the glutes to recover in between each movement. So you're better off doing fast, quick, short, than you are trying to go long steps, slow. 15 each position. Alternatively, did you get them all? Yeah. That's, that's okay. Yep. Alternatively, because the sidestep is the ultimately the easiest one to do, do 30 sidesteps. So if you're like, oh shit, angled walk, seize walk, oh man, that's too much for a Monday morning. Just give me 30 sidesteps and you're gonna, you're gonna get those, get those booties turned on.
I'm gonna give you gang in-house another 10 seconds and then we're gonna go on to our full body hollows. Five seconds. All right, gang, rest. So give me down in those full body hollows. So full body hollow, you're gonna go on your lower back. Okay, so all my weight is essentially on my lower back. Make a fist, knees together, feet together, trying to get my fist to my heels. Okay, to make it harder, hands go above head, legs go away from pelvis, put both together to make it really hard. We're gonna go 20 seconds. Three, two, one, go. 20 seconds. Stay tight. Lower back pressed into the ground. Should feel this in your abs. I lost track of time. I'm just kidding. Five seconds. <coughs> Rest. All right, guys, second round. So for the second round, I'm going to time you. So we're going to do another 15 each of the banded three-way hip series. And then we're going to do another 20-second full body hollow. I'm going to time you guys just so we can make sure that we're all staying on track. Um, I'm going to give you guys 45 seconds to either just do 30 steps in each direction or 15 of the three different directions. Three, two, one, go. Just trying to blow the butt out, guys. Trying to get a good bump, pump, butt, pump. Getting blood flow into the glutes. Side steps, get it done. Got about 25 seconds. If you guys don't get it all, don't worry. You're still getting a good butt pump. 15 seconds, 10 seconds. And we're gonna go back into that full body hollow. Rest. All right guys, back into that full body hollow. We're gonna go 20 seconds in that position. Remember longer lever, harder movement. Three, two, one, go. Knees should be together. Feet should be together. Bonus points if you can point the toes hard. 10 seconds. Don't hold your breath. Focus on the exhale. Rest. All right, gang. So we got our beast or ape crawl. And I also believe that a stiff bear might be in here. So Three different crawls that you guys can work on. First one is your beast crawl. So just on all, uh, on all fours in a beast position. Baby steps, okay? Second would be your stiff bear. This is a great one if you have, um, if you can touch your toes, I would say don't do the stiff bear. If you have a hard time touching your toes, the stiff bear is gonna help. And then you have your ape for the ape. If you can't squat all the way down with your heels on the ground, this is a great exercise for you to do. If you can squat all the way down with your heels on the ground, this is that's still a great exercise for you to do. But basically, you're going to take your knee to the ground, take a step, keep your chest up the entire time. Okay. Pick any of those. Regular beast crawl. Stiff bear. Ape. And if you just looked at me and you're like, I don't know what any of those are, just hold the beast position, hold the down position for 30 seconds. We're going 30 seconds, three, two, one, go. So just holding this position, you could take the knees a little bit, kind of move the hips around. So you don't have to do a crawl, you can just hold that base position. If you're doing the eight crawl, I want chest up, head up. Nobody's gonna move that ground on you. 10 seconds, five seconds, rest. All right, guys, we're gonna go into an ISO TWI. So on our bellies, or uh, excuse me, on our chest, 
we're going to go uh, to me, T position. So T position, thumbs up, points to the ceiling. So we're going to go T. Then we're going to go W, palms down to the ground. And then we're going to go I, thumbs up to the ceiling. We're going to hold each one for 15 seconds. Three, two, one, go. T first. Give me that T. Squeeze the shoulder blades back there. Focus on the shoulder blades. Not the hands. Shoulder blades. Thumbs are pointing to the ceiling. You're in a T position. W. Elbows are going to come to your torso. Thumbs are going to come to your shoulders. You're going to pinch your shoulder blades down and back. Palms are pointing towards the ground. Tight shoulder blades. <clears throat> Give me an eye. Straighten those arms out above your head. Lock elbows, biceps close to the ears. We're going to repeat these uh, two exercises one more time. Rest. All right, gang, one more time with those movements. Beast crawl, stiff bear, eight walk, your choice. You could also switch it up if you want to. Three, two, one, go. If you're doing the eight crawl, hands are in between knees. Just think about how an ape walks. Or gorilla, I'm not my primate, my primate terminology, don't judge me. Five seconds. Rest. All right, gang, back down into that Y, or excuse me, uh, back down into that TWI. Got one more round, then we're gonna get into the workout. Three, two, one, go. Remember guys, shoulder blades. That's what I want you focusing. I want you focusing on your upper back doing the effort to lift your arms up off the floor. Not just trying to lift your hands up off the floor. All right, give me a W. This should be the best position for you to be able to get the most amount of shoulder blades together and down, big squeeze. All right, give me an eye. Elbows locked, biceps by ears. This is the hard one. Good job, gang. Good job. Good job. You got five seconds. Hold that. Hold that. Rest. Juice up, guys. Grab some water. Grab some water. Grab some juice. This is um this this is seventies come on seventies driving tunes I think okay so we have elevated deadlifts now the idea with the elevated deadlifts is basically if regular deadlift is not hard enough then you would essentially elevate your feet roughly two inches off the floor, okay? So if a regular deadlift is not heavy enough, do an elevated deadlift. If you get a great uh, butt workout and a great hamstring workout, and you're not lifting like all of the weight that we have in the gym or all the weight that you have at home, then a regular deadlift is totally fine, okay? So the only reason why you would go to an elevated deadlift is if for some reason, a regular deadlift is not hard enough. That's the first exercise. And for you guys in-house, two inches. So these will work, six of those pads will work. These will also work, okay? So if you guys wanna do an elevated deadlift, let me know. And I'll throw some stuff at you. Um, so that's the first movement, elevated deadlift. Second movement is narrow grip push-ups. Okay, so for this one, we're doing this for the pecs, 
Okay, so when you guys are in that narrow grip position, first of all, your thumbs are gonna be about a fist distance from your hand. You're gonna think about tucking your elbows, your elbow pits towards your hips. And you're gonna think about rotating the hand on the ground, but it's not gonna actually rotate on the ground. So I'm thinking about as I push, as I go down, I'm thinking about rotating my hands, okay? But not actually twisting. And at this top position, I'm thinking about rotating this way. So my hands don't move, but I am trying to kind of twist my mat. That should help you get a little more pecs. Huh? That's all right. It, it, I, don't, I don't blame you. It took, it took me years to be able to figure out, wait a minute, I'm twisting, but I'm not twisting? Uh, well, I'll go into it a little more. So narrow grip push-up, single arm rack squat to curl. You're gonna start in a rack position. B stance, okay? You're gonna squat down, stand up, curl any grip you want, back up, back down. Last exercise, uh, bent, this is our uh, mechanical drop step. Bent over face pull, 10 upright rows, as many as you can do. We are gonna go three sets. I'm gonna give you guys thir give me 13 minutes. Your reps, 15 deadlifts, as many as possible, narrow grip push-ups, 12 each, single arm rack squat to curls, 10 bent over face pulls, and then as many as possible, high pulls or upright rows. Three, two, one, go. You should probably definitely do elevated. Okay, cool. Carrie, you could probably do elevated. Jay and Emily, I like you guys flat. Uh, Jay, give me, hold on for one second. Just stand. You do not have to elevate your heels. Yeah, there you go. Uh, do it just like Ella. <laughs> Jay, do you feel that in your pecs? Okay, good. Then you're doing them right. Bend your knees. Bend your knees. Bend your knees. More, 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 more. All the way down. Yeah, yeah, all the way down. Do that again. Touch the ground. Touch the ground. Yeah, there. If you guys don't feel the narrow grip push-ups in your your pecs, your pectoralises, please let me know. So I can give you some coaching cues. Yeah. Stay in this position, hold here, squat, curl. No step back, yeah, just stay there, yep. You okay? Yeah, I know. <laughs> One of those things where like 10 minutes in the workout, it's like, all right, this is too warm now. Put your legs. Yeah. For some of you, um, like Ella, <laughs> pull back. So uh, let's go. Um, for some of you guys that need to make the squat to curl, 
So obviously your lower body is gonna be able to handle a lot more weight than your bicep, right? So what you would do is basically, if the weight is too heavy, like you're like, oh, I can't get quite the curl, okay? You would decrease your weight and you would hold a weight in the opposite hand so it would look like this. That way we can make it a little harder on the lower body and still stay somewhat doable for the bicep, okay? Some of you might not have to do that. There is no right or wrong way. It just is one of those things where if you feel like you need a little bit more work in your lower body, hold the dumbbell on the opposite hand. And you can also curl both arms if you wanted to. Here, switch. Go ahead, finish up. But your next one, see how the working hand is going to be in the opposite leg. That's okay, finish. Do that. So, yeah, okay. Both sides. Do the same on both sides. Switch your legs. Yeah. So you're going to do it opposite for this set, and we'll fix the next set. 10. Okay. And then as many as you can. Two dumbbells. You could, uh, yeah, two dumbbells. We got 10. See, I'm going to give you some plates. Hold like this. 10. Okay. And then as many as you can do. <laughs> it is. <laughs> 10 bent over face pulls, five to 10 pounds for that. Don't go too nutty for that one. Too nutty. Those are too easy. Okay, so watch me. So straight down. Yeah, okay, now go elbows up and think about pulling your thumbs in line with your forehead. Yeah, now down. Yeah. Yeah. Do that again. Down. This. Okay, back down. Give me 10 of those. Elbows up nice and high. Good, Emily. So once you guys get 10 in that bent over face pull position, you're gonna stand up and you're gonna do 10 upright rows or as many as you can do. This is a mechanical drop set. So you make it hard first and then we make it a little bit easier. Yes. Okay. You feel it dealt. No, no. As long as you don't feel it in your shoulder joint, you should feel dealt. And once you get 10, stand up and then as many as you can. Yeah, yes. Going 13 minute, gang. We are seven minutes down. Feel online. How does it feel? Okay. Feel anything in your back? Okay. Feels look good. Looks much better than when you started. Yeah.
So when you go down, bend your knees. Yeah, and then stand back up. Do it again. Okay, now do that same thing, but push your butt back. Yes. That's it. This is week three, guys. Three. This should be the hardest week. This should absolutely positively be harder than week one. Everything, all the exercises, most parts should be harder than week one. <clears throat> week two, you might have figured out where you can go a little heavier for this workout. Week three definitely positively should be harder than week one and week two. We are going 13 minutes or three sets. If you get three sets done, grab a little breather. Maybe do some more delts. Tank top season coming up, everybody. Tank top season in two weeks. Where starts that shit early? Yeah, and hold, hold here, okay? Do a squat and then stand up, do a curl. Yes. Good, Kara. Ten and a half minutes down, gang. Two and a half minutes to go. Okay, we got about 90 seconds. Aaron, good push up. Push them ups, gang. Push them ups. Or earth the ways, as Chuck Norris likes to call them. Because Chuck Norris does not push himself away from the earth, he pushes the earth away from himself. Hence the name Earthaways. Don't laugh at my Chuck Norris joke. Yeah. Gang, one minute, about 50 seconds actually. 50 seconds. If you didn't get three sets, it's totally fine. Twenty seconds, guys. Fifteen. Finish whatever it is that you are doing. We're gonna get a little breather, a little rest. We're gonna get into our next series. Five seconds. That is time. Can you guys grab some water? A little breather, a little rest. Two minutes.
a little meatloaf, a little meatloaf for you guys this morning. A little meatloaf. Crazy bastards. He was great in the Rocky Road Picture Show. All right, guys. So next series. We have three different types of, of um, pull-aparts that you can do. You can do palms down. You can do palms up. And you can do no monies, which is basically palms up, except your elbows are bent to your side. Now, you can do these standing as it's written. We're doing this either on the ground or a foam roller down your spine. And the reason being is because ultimately it gives you some feedbacks at the shoulder, at the shoulder blades, give you some feedback, let you know you're doing it right. If you feel really good with your pull-aparts, you don't have to do them on the ground. Again, it just gives you some feedback for the shoulder blades because we want the shoulder blades moving. We don't just want the hands moving, okay? So that's the first one. Second one is gonna be a squat to posterior lunge. There are two different ways that you can do this. You either do one squat and then a posterior lunge on each side, okay? Or one squat, one lunge, one squat, one lunge. Um, that way is obviously gonna be a lot harder. So squat, lunge, squat, lunge, a lot harder than squat, lunge, lunge. Last one, pup alternating hand releases or renegade row. So you're in a push up position. That's what pup stands for, push up position. And you're just, hands come up off the ground. I want you to touch the ground real soft. So not this, okay? If that is easy, hold about five pound dumbbells up to 10 in each hand. But if you do that one a little bit slower, it'll be just as hard as with the dumbbells, okay? I'm not a huge fan of that particular exercise with dumbbells. Um, that's just really a preference on you guys. I don't like doing the dumbbells. I find it just, you hit the ground too hard and then your elbows kind of bother you the next day and your wrists will kind of beat up a little bit. So we're gonna go eight minutes. As many rounds as you get done. Reps are gonna be 20. Um, 10 to 15 squat to post lunges. That really just depends on how you're gonna do those. One squat, one lunge on each side or one squat, one lunge, one squat, one lunge. And then last one is uh, eight to 10, we'll call it 10 for all of everybody here. 10 alternating hand releases. That's a core exercise, okay? Eight minutes, three, two, one, go. So we got our pull aparts on a foam roller, on the ground. Remember the single most important thing that we're looking for with these pull-aparts is that you are focusing on squeezing your shoulder blades together. Shoulder blades together. Should be feeling this in your mid back, should be feeling this between your shoulder blades, depending on your hand position. You might also feel this in kind of like the back of your shoulders, like your post delt area. All those are great. 20, oh, uh, 15 to 20 for the no monies. Air uh, towards 20 rather than 15. No monies and face pulls, or excuse me, uh, pull aparts and face pulls, pull aparts in any way, uh, face pulls in any way. Those are probably the two best exercises for you to do arguably every single day. Great for posture, great for shoulder health. Kind of takes us out of that kind of forward hunched posture. So after that, you're gonna do your squat and lunge combo. Remember that is either one squat and one lunge on each side or one squat and right side lunge, one squat, left side lunge. Either one of those is fine. Um, the one squat and one lunge is gonna be a lot harder than the one squat and two lunges. After that, we're gonna go into our pup alternating hand releases. 
Remember, for those nice and soft, I want you to think about your hands as your feet. So just like when we do a jump, we land soft on the feet because we don't want your joints and your bones to handle all that force. We want your muscles to handle that force. It's the same thing with that pup alternating hand releases. Don't let that hand slam into the ground. You're gonna wake up tomorrow. Your wrists are gonna be a little sore. Elbows are gonna be a little sore. You're gonna wonder what you did. And I'm gonna tell you, you didn't listen to me. That's what you did. Nice and slow. This is a core exercise. So when you guys are doing that pup hand release, you should be tight core. After those pup hand releases, you're gonna go right over there. <laughs> yeah, wrap it around your head first. And after the pup hand releases, you're going back to your uh, pull aparts. Always remember if you can wrap that band around your throat before you do these exercises, it makes your workout last a lot shorter. Just kidding, don't do that. Focus on the shoulder blades. This is not an arm exercise per se. This is a mid trap, lower trap. Four minutes, four minutes to go. Good job, guys. Good job. You guys are all doing great. Three minutes to go. Five minutes down. <coughs> if your legs are not burning at the end of your squat to lunges, then either make it harder by doing one squat, one lunge, as opposed to one squat, two lunges, or add some weight. Don't be a baby, make it hard. Like my motivational, uh, my motivational speeches there, Suzanne. <laughs> I said, do you like my motivational speeches? Don't be a baby. Always remember, Jamie is a nice cop. I'm the bad cop. Two minutes. Two minutes, gang. Two minutes. Nice tight core for that pup hand release. Slower, harder. Feet together harder. However, don't take your feet so much together that you then lose the core working. If you want to make those pup hand releases a little bit harder, you can put a push up in. We do have a finisher today. Send me some juice. Don't spill all your juice in this workout. Send me some juice. We've got a finisher.
You guys are almost done. You've got one minute, gang. One minute. Thirty seconds, guys. Twenty seconds. <coughs> Fifteen. Guys, that's time. Finish whatever it is that you are doing. That is time. Give you guys a little breather. Need a little core finisher today. Okay, gang, so for our finisher, the first two exercises are going to be um, penguins. Stupid ass exercise for a or stupid name for an exercise, but good exercise. Two different ways you could do it. Easier way is with feet on the ground. Harder way is with feet up in the air. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go um, elbows locked, hands right next to my uh, hips. I'm going to push my hands towards my feet which is gonna curl me up, shoulder blades up off the ground. And then I'm trying to touch as far down on my foot as I can, okay? You wanna make it harder, feet up, and still same idea as you're trying to reach as far away from the shoulder as you possibly can. We're gonna do 20 seconds on each side, okay? Then we're gonna flip over uh, into either a front plank or a full body hollow, whichever one. Um, or you can also do reach and curls if you want to do reach and curls. So you can do reach and curls or full body hollow or front plank after we do your penguins. 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Those two exercises first, and I'll give you the next two. Three, two, one. So trying to touch as low as you can on your feet. Shoulder blades up off the ground. <laughs> Rest. All right, give me a full body hollow or a front plank or reaching curls, your choice. Three, two, one. Full body hollow, reach and curls, front plank, your choice. Rest. Okay, we're gonna go right side plank. Right side plank. So on your right side. Three, two, one, go. Right side plank, just holding it. Rest, we're gonna do our hand walk out to a side plank. So I'm gonna walk my hands out and I'm gonna go into a right side plank and then walk my hands back up. Three, two, one, go. So walk the hands out into a right side plank and then walk the hands back to your toes, stand back up and then back into that right side plank. <laughs> I got you on that one. 
Rest. Left side plank. Left side plank. Two, one, go. Left side plank. Rest, left hand walk out, side plank. Go, bend those knees to make it a little bit easier. Let the knees help you out. Nice and slow rolling into that left side plank. Slower the better. Rest. Guys, last one, Superman's. So you're just laying on your belly. You're going to squeeze your butt. You're going to lift your feet and your chest up off the floor. Three, two, one, go. I want you to squeeze your glutes. I don't want you to focus on your lower back doing this movement. Your butt should be helping out. Your lower back is absolutely going to be working, but it should not be working the most. Rest, last one, you're gonna swim on your belly. You can either flutter like you're drowning, okay? Or you can actually swim. I don't know how to swim. I know how to not drown, so don't judge my swimming. We're gonna go 20 seconds. Three, two, one, go. So either fluttering your hands and your feet. Oh, well, that's pretty good. Thank God. I didn't. <laughs> All right, everybody look at Ella. That's how you do it. Rest. Aaron, that was good too. I like a little doggy paddle. You guys are done. Good job, guys. Thank you, Ben. You're welcome. Good job, Aiden. It's getting harder. That's good. See you, you next time. A, yes, you guys have a great day.